The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the leaves. As soon as you see they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The whole of the book of Daniel is shot through with all this uh, apocalyptic writing. We have to remember that apocalyptic writing is all about giving hope and it's speaking to a particular situation. I know that a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to uh, predict the end of time using the apocalyptic literature, but because human beings are the same always, You can find circumstances to read into Daniel and into the book of Apocalypse at the end of the New Testament whenever you like. I mean, you could see uh, Putin as the big horn, you know, it it speaks to all these things. But if you look really carefully at the book of Daniel itself, it's written at the time of and in the circumstances of Antiochus and the big horn that comes up in the middle of the ten is Antiochus becoming the great ruler after ten smaller Greek kings uh, that preceded him. So it's important to look at what's behind it. And it's always about hope. It's always about the fact that it doesn't matter. Um, well, it matters because we suffer and we, we are struggling with the bad rulers we so often are lumped with, but at the same time, right at the the heart of it, it doesn't matter because God is really in charge and God will somehow bring good out of the mess that human beings constantly make. Then the gospel is about the kingdom. As we get to the end of the church here, so often it is about the kingdom. And it's an interesting parable. Firstly, um, having spent a lot of my life on a farm that had fig trees. Um, Figs are are an interesting uh, type of tree and an interesting thing to think about. The fig tree never produces fruit on an old branch. So to get a fig tree to produce fruit, you have to prune it every year. And it's where it's been pruned that a new shoot comes out and you get figs there. And it's very clear Um, and it's always around springtime when the fruit comes out. And this is obviously what's in Jesus' mind, that it's quite clear if you look around at trees that summer is on its way. And what he wants them to see is something new has happened, something has been pruned, something uh, is being cut and has been, uh, the dead is being torn out of it so that something new can come about, and that new is the kingdom that comes with Christ. But it's quite clear also, when he says this generation will not pass away, he's not talking in uh, temporal terms, in time. He's not saying to the disciples themselves that the end of time will be within their lifetime. Um, What he is saying is within their lifetime the kingdom comes about, and of course it has. The moment Christ is born in Bethlehem, the kingdom of God has come crashing into human history. The kingdom arrives with Christ, which is the irony whenever he says to anybody, you are very close to the kingdom. Yes, they're standing about a foot away from it. The moment Christ is in our midst, the kingdom has come. But we need to grow into that kingdom. The kingdom comes to fulfillment within um, our lifetime. And every choice we make for love, every choice we make for God's will is a choice for the kingdom. It is bringing the kingdom about. It's something we grow into. It's already in God. We have to get there. The image I always use for the kingdom and also for our own redemption, which we also need to grow into moment by moment, is buying children clothes that's too big for them and the hope that they will grow into it. 
I experienced that a lot because I was the only boy and I was nine, 10 years younger than the next girl. So uh, my school clothes were always big because my mother didn't have somebody else to hand them on from and she wanted them to last as long as possible. And I always disappointed her. I never fully grew into them. They always got too short before they fitted. We can't take that option. We have to fully grow into the kingdom. And it's our responsibility to bring it about.